Hey, how's it going? Welcome to a Stormworks Vehicle Showcase of this vehicle that I've built called the Offshore Handler. Take a look. So here, on the deck, we got a crane. Um, we have a container handler, which is a hardpoint connector, which connects to the center of the container, as well as a magall connector. So these are interchangeable, and this can, of course, be used to connect to containers. And then this can also be, can be used to connect to containers or any other, any other vehicle or item that is in the water that you want to pick up. Now it's still on the main deck, got a garage and the galley, so let's open the garage door first. So here we got our, garage, or our door to the garage, and we have garage lights in here, so a couple lights up here, lights over here, and then we'll, of course the garage door switch. So this will open the garage if you want to stuff any vehicles in here, smaller vehicles, you can, as well as there's also some um, tracks here that you can load on and off the ship from here. Over here, a little workbench, just some workbench lights. So we got some welding torches, um, a radio, flashlight, and some first aid equipment, and of course, a heater. So if you're in the Arctic or anything like that and the door is open and you're getting cold, you can use that. We we'll also have a fire extinguisher right here. Let's turn those lights off. Let's close the garage door and then turn off the garage lights. Over here on the main deck as well, in the rear of the ship, there is a system over here. This is a fuel pump. So we have our fuel gauge, of course. Pump fuel out, pump fuel in, and a free flow valve. So you can equip your hose right here, attach it here, and um, fill up any other vehicle that you want to. Um, if it does have its own, if that other vehicle has its own pump, you can just turn on this free flow valve and the other vehicle's pump will work. You don't have to turn on any of these pumps in here. And of course, if it doesn't have a pump, you can of course use these pump fuel in and pump fuel out. So you can grab fuel from another vehicle or you can send it to another vehicle if you want. Also have a fire extinguisher and an elect any uh, electric cable. So you can just click here and then if you need to charge up another vehicle or you have another vehicle out here, you can use that to charge up the vehicle. Over here, another fire extinguisher and a couple of ropes. So these are going to be used for these four winches over here. Um, if you have a helicopter that can land here, or this deck can be used to land helicopters. So if you have a helicopter that is on the deck, you can use these winches to anchor it down to make sure when you pull away, you don't um, leave the helicopter just in the water or anything like that. We'll go over this crane, but first let's turn on the engines so we can let those warm up because this is a steam vehicle. So you do have to wait for the steam to build pressure. So here's our bridge here up on the top floor. We're getting this captain's seat. We'll turn the system on here. And if you hear that alarm, that's just going to be an alarm here. We are depth warning. This means that we are our depth is below 10 meters. So let's just silence those warnings. The other warnings we have are bilge and the low fuel. The bilge will not have an audible sound. However, this red light will turn on when the bilge is running. And then they also have a low fuel. So I believe this turns on when there is either 100 or 500 liters of fuel remaining. Um, but with how big this fuel tank is, 16,000 liters, you shouldn't have any problem running out of fuel or anything like that. So we'll keep those silenced warnings on right now. Let's turn that furnace on as well as the boiler pumps. In the bilge here, we got a camera system. So our first camera is going to be the engine room here. You can see the pistons as well as the furnace back there as well as the two boilers. We can go to our next button. This is going to be the garage, which is, which is what I just showed you. Next camera is going to be the rear deck. You can just see the crane as well as the container areas and just the entire deck as well as back here if you need to. And crane number four, this is going to be a pitch stabilized camera. It's going to be right on front of the bridge, just right there. And that is a that is pitch stabilized, so it doesn't matter how high or low the nose of the ship is or how the pitch of the ship is, it's going to maintain level and the the camera will not stray away from the horizon. You can see we got to zoom in, zoom out, as well as an infrared system. So um, during nighttime, it's hard to see, you can use this to look at. And of course, if you go next, go ahead, back to camera one. Other things we have are, we of course have the boiler information. So boilers, temperatures, pressures, furnace temperature, fuel level. Um, we have navigational info here. So this is the direction you're facing, the general direction, clock, X and Y coordinates. Um, we have an anchor right here. So we can deploy our anchor here. The anchor system is on. Here's our anchor cable, anchor cable length and the distance to seabed. So when the anchor is connected, it'll give a little bit more slack. As you can see here, there's about 10 meters of difference and then the anchor is connect, gonna be connected. The 
reason I have, there's some slack there is just because of in case it's super windy or wavy, you want a little bit of distance so the anchor doesn't slip or fall apart or become disconnected from the uh, seabed floor. And as you can see, the pistons are moving now. So we have an engine ready uh, indicator right here. So as soon as the pistons are ready to go, or all of our power is being generated, our engine is ready. And right now, our throttle is below 0.2, so we have our docking mode. This can be used with our WASD keys and everything else we got. We have nav lights, we have our deck lights. These are going to be the rear lights and the front deck, as well as uh, one front spotlight, two rear spotlights. Those are going to be right here on that rear part of the bridge, as well as side spotlights. So those are going to be on the sides, of course, just so you can see other traffic or anything that's near to you. And then we also have underwater lights. So these are helpful. Uh, we're getting close to the seabed depth. The seabed is getting closer to the water line. Um, these are going to be helpful for seeing where you are or how close you are to the seabed floor. And we also have a foghorn here. You hear that going off. Um, we have a, two maps here. This one's zoomed out more than this one. This display, our speed is right here in knots. The top speed of this ship is around 37 knots, 36 to 37. Um, with how windy it does get in this game and how way high these waves get, you can actually go faster than 37 knots. There's a waypoint system on here. So let's say we want to go out to another island. Let's just say we want to go to this island here. You can put that waypoint in here with our input waypoint. And the this will show our, this is our indicator of where we're facing. And we also have a waypoint line to show where to go. We have a distance right here, our kilometers, 12.8 kilometers. As you can see here, 12.8 kilometers. And as you start moving, an ETA uh, system will come up here. It'll show you how long it'll take to get to that waypoint, depending on your current speed. Now over on the right here, to our uh, captain's seat, just a little microphone or speaker, and then we can also transmit our voice here so we can determine what frequency we're gonna transmit or to tell if we're transmitting or if we're receiving a signal or someone else's voice. And then we also have a transmit voice. So I can press and hold the transmit button. And of course I need to hold down the button to transmit my voice. And you can see on the right side there are transmitting. And then of course we have a green indicator here that says we're transmitting our voice. Now hopping back in the captain's seat, let's drag our anchor back up. You can see that uh, anchor cable anchor system is on until it reaches the highest cable length and it disables itself and we can start moving just a little bit. So right now, we're in docking mode. So this is how you use WASD. So let's hold W. And as you can see here now, our ETA has been updated to 3.3 hours. Oh, well, it's changed again to 42 minutes. Now it does update around every four seconds, just so it doesn't go from three hours to like two minutes, things like that. And as we increase speed, we go above 0.2. Our docking mode has now been disabled and we can um, just depending on the throttle. So if I increase throttle to full, we have our rear azipods here. This is just a fixed steering angle. As you can see, our ETA has actually less than an hour. It's 11.7 minutes to get to our destination. Let's slow back down here. Then we can start turning. So now we're in docking mode. I can just hold A, aka left, and we're going to immediately just turn on a dime almost. So there's left. If I hold D to go right, you can see we're going to turn all the way right. You can also, as you noticed, you have also have the S key, so that's just going to be reverse. So you can hold S, the as you pause will stay straight and they'll reverse. Now while you're holding S, you can also turn in reverse too, so you'll still back up. Um, the A and D will be inverted though, kind of like if you're driving a car backwards. That's uh, the steering that you will have right there. So next thing we got is we'll leave the engine on right now we'll leave the anchor where it is on this first floor here we have an aid station here in medical bay so there are six medical beds here of course we also have a light switch in here to brighten it up in here and a lot of padded seats here so a lot of inventory equipment with defibrillators and first aid kits in case you or a uh, player gets damaged or of course any um npc gets damaged and you need to heal them up we got a lot of medical beds here we also have a heater here if you're in the Arctic, um, any cold air, you can also use that heater. Now through here is just going to be a catwalk over the garage. You can see that camera right there that we've seen this railing here before. 
then over here it's just gonna be the other side of the ship so you just see it's a garage right here and of course you can go back to the front of the ship or go back to the rear let's close this door now coming from the garage let's turn these lights off you can turn off any of the switches you can uh, any of these right now this has two light switches you can turn them on or off on either switch which is kind of nice now going through the catwalk if you go down here into the garage and of course through this door you have the galley let's turn this light on now the other way you can get through this is from the lower deck galley or from the main deck is the galley you enter it from the rear of the ship there are some sliding bookcase kind of like systems here where you have fire extinguishers oxygen masks of fire equipment and another fire extinguisher so um a lot of pull out shelves to get as you can see we have the fire equipment the repair equipment so a diving and then some welding torches and a first aid kit oxygen and we got a rescue equipment so first aid um, a lot of emergency locator signal and then glow, glow sticks things like that of course, you can also see the first aid kits, then cold weather equipment, two thermal clothing, and of course, we have a heater here as well. And over here, of course, we have miscellaneous items. So hose, cable, ropes, some pistols in case you need to defend yourself if you have the weapons DLC, some flashlights, and then of course, some more first aid kits because you can't, you can always have more first aid. Now here's, in, here's the galley, uh, just some nice seating areas. You can see here, some nice glass tables nothing too fancy here is the food preparation area you got a microwave a dishwasher sink got some burners things like that some uh, other shelves here we also have a heater up above in case that other heater doesn't work all the way over here some drawers cabinets things like that now if we're moving down here to the lower deck or the basement or lower deck area um, as you're coming down the hallway lights here Turn all the lights and to the right as you're coming down the stairway. We got a pump room. So these are the fluid cannons. So if you need to put out any fires, we got these here. An air pump to push the air into the furnace. And then the exhaust from the furnace again out. And of course, we also have some bilge pumps here too. Um, in case this lower floor uh, has some water in it. Moving out from the pump room to the left, we have a controller room. So this is where all the controllers are. Um, if any of them become damaged or anything like that, if you need to do any diagnostics or anything like that, you can use this room to figure out what's going on, what's going wrong, and things like that. So there are some also uh, controllers in this rear wall here. That's about it. Everything else. Um, I did my best to make these look like servers, see if there's hard drives in here, some lights, make sure everything's on here. Things like that. we got some nice little wood flooring here. Back out in the main area, um, again, another heater. In case you need it, we also have two heaters there, which are also controlled by this switch. So you can see they're on right there. All these other rooms are going to be crew quarters areas. So we have a light switch, passenger seat, a bed, um, and just a little shower, toilet, and a little mirror here with a sink. So these are all identical. They are mirrored, as you can see here. So if I go to the left, you have a bathroom in there. If over here, if I go to the right, you have a bathroom. Basically identical. Same with these three doors on this side. And then we have the engine room here. So nice little wood flooring here. You can open up here. Go to the left. Let's turn on those engine room lights. Um, here's the engine. So we have 16 steam pistons with twin boiler systems. So steam boiler per side as well as one condenser per side. Big battery as well as, of course, we have the furnace here. And then we also have the generator here. So this is our generator output. Um, some other things you need to know. So we got the flywheel, um, just to keep the power the same as you're increasing in throttle, and just that generator output. Here we also have some information, so diesel, the amount of fuel in the furnace, which will update the furnace temperature, and then of course the total diesel level. So this will reflect the amount of fuel that's in the furnace at a given time, and then this is the amount of total fuel you have. Let's turn off those lights. You can see that camera there that we saw in the beginning. Let's go back to the bridge. Before we get to the bridge, um, here are the fluid cannons. So there's one on this side and there's one on the other side, as you can see over here. These are going to be used to put out fires. So you just want to grab this water cannon controller. You can press space 
or whatever your trigger button is to shoot the or extinguish the fire from wherever you are. This is a 180 degree, almost 180 degree uh, access. So you can see we're going all the way over. It stops right about there. So these pumps do reach a good, a good uh, angle away. As you can see, they're really far away, which is really helpful. And then when you're done, you can either press space. Or while you're using it, just press 1 and it'll reset it back to its default uh, rotation. Same thing with this one over here. So you press space, whoops. Press space, and then you can just move it around wherever you want. And then just press 1, it'll reset it and also turn it off. Now back on the bridge. Let's go back to port to see if we can grab a container with the uh, crane that we do have on board. So using that docking mode, as you can see, our throttle is at zero or below 0 0.2. We can spin all the way around and turn on a dime, which is really useful here in these close quarter situations. You're pretty close. I may also turn down the speed at docking mode. Right now it's locked to around, I think it's like 10 knots. I may also slow it down just because it seems a little sensitive on the left and right. But we'll see. We'll see what everyone else wants. Right there seems like a good area. Good distance away from the port. Let's deploy our anchor. You can see the anchor system is active and then right now it's connected. Let's go up to that area so we can bring that vehicle closer. We'll get up top of here on top of the bridge and then of course on top of here we can jump we over here let's put this vehicle into a better position all right so that seems like a good spot let's turn the parking brake on just so it doesn't fly away we want to run away from us and we can get in the crane now All right, here's the crane, the crane operator's seat. You open this crane hatch, give him the ladder, pop up and you can close that area. So here's the crane, you cannot move it unless you t flip this switch, the reset slash unlock crane, and now you can move it anywhere you want to. So let's turn these crane lights on and let's grab that container. This, is, this ship also has a roll stabilizer on it, so um, depending on a big vehicle that you're using or trying to lift, the ship will try and compensate its best to um, fix that and try and make sure it doesn't roll over. Stability on this vehicle is pretty good, so you shouldn't really have to worry about it too much. Right here we're pretty good. Um, right here we can click on this button and we also have a HUD camera going off of the gantry crane right there. So we can go, we can see what we're looking at. We can try and get pretty close to the container there. And right here we will have to pivot the container left or right. So I can grab this container from this vehicle here. That seems like a good angle. It does take a little bit of finessing here to try and make the pivot gra or the system grab it. It's not that bad. It's right on top of it. There we go. So now we've grabbed it. We can go all the way up with our winch, just pressing the up button. Let's move it all the way out, and now we can just rotate. And there we go, we've grabbed our container. We'll also use this camera here to figure out where we are on the ship. And let's move it down to this area here, this number one area. So there are buttons alongside each connector to turn them on, as you can see right there, or in this crane operator, so you can also turn them on from here. So now we can see those are turned on. Let's lower these this container here. Let's turn it. Let's turn it left so it can actually be anchored to the deck. If 
looks like we'll have to turn a little bit more. See what's going on. We also have spotlights here, so I can see when it's at nighttime. And also we have a gantry spotlight. So the spotlight from that gantry crane does have a light by itself. So here, there you go. You can see it a little bit better there. Turn off that HUD. Move this a little closer and you can see that isn't, those connectors are not turned on on the container. So let's go turn them on. Just like that. We can lower the container into position. Just like that. Then we can disconnect, release the container. And we can also lock the crane. Just like that, it'll automatically reset itself and move all the way closer to the crane itself. So the all the weight is centralized around this pivot point. Now, if you do want to change the container handler um, hook over for a mag all, all you have to do is grab this side, grab this cable, and then grab the other cable. You can put those into these storage uh, shelves here and grab this winch here or this cable here and hook it up the other way just like this I can grab this side there we go so now that's getting put into place we can grab these cables and anchor this other hook this container hook back here so as you're moving away as you're taking off you don't have to worry about that uh, hook flying off into the water so let's turn off those crane lights as well there we are that's there and that's there so if you want to use that of course if we go back into the crane operator's seat there is a little hat there's a little button over here that's the mag all so you can click on that and that will turn on the mag all the release container this will not do anything with the mag all so make sure you have the mag all button switched and you also have the uh you have the camera here so if we unlock the camera or unlock the crane Move the gantry all the way out to this side here to the starboard side of the ship and let's also lower the crane a little bit lower the hook so here as we're descending you can see our winch length our actual winch length and the desired winch length so when you lock the crane when you want to turn off the switch the desired winch length will default back to i believe it's like one meter or something like that. So it will go back to, I think it's like 0 0.15 or something like that. So we'll see that as we descend. So um, as the crane is going down, it, also the camera zoom will also start as soon as we reach, I believe it's like 12 or 10 meters. You can see the camera will zoom in to try and follow this mag all hook. And it's the same with the other hook, the container handler hook. So if you drop something in the ocean, you can use that as well. So you can see, we're zooming in the depth i believe the hook is already yep it's already anchored to the bottom it's not anchored it's just sitting at the bottom but you can see the camera is zooming in just like this now we can turn it off here and let's reset the cranes you can see the winch length sorry is now to 0 0.5 meters and the actual winch length is increasing or sorry decreasing it's bringing the hook up and going to bring it back into the gantry and uh, reset itself so while we reset this as you can see, you can just leave it and it'll reset itself. And this light inside will turn off as you leave. Over here on the right side of the crane, you can see if incoming helicopter, have the helicopter set frequency to 64 to remote raise the crane boom. Now at the, I'll show you what that means soon. But you can see this hook is being raised and it's gonna move back to the center. Like this. So it's gonna the gantry is gonna move all the way in, and then the the crane will move back to its locked position, and it locks from on from this side. So it'll turn all the way, and then it'll lock. Just like that, you can see it's turning. And just like this, it's gonna lock in place. Just like that. Now it's stuck. If you're in the crane operator seat and you want to move it left and right, up and down, or move a gantry, you will not be able to do that unless the unlock switch is turned on. Now I'll show you how to use this remote raise crane boom feature. All right, here I am in the offshore flight finder. This is a little helicopter that I've also built in tandem with the offshore handler. 
This has a system that can also raise that crane boom. So let's get a little closer. And in those directions that I have right next to that crane, we want to set our radio frequency to 64. And let's get a little bit lower so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. See you pretty close, just like this. You can transmit. I'm going to transmit and the crane will automatically raise its boom so you can actually park a helicopter on the rear deck in, even though you have these containers here already. So there's enough space to park a small little helicopter here. Just like this. Let me get a little closer. Just like that. We can turn off our helicopter. We've landed safely. And everything like that. We'll turn that main battery on. So... If you want to reset the crane boom, you could either press the switch to transmit your voice while the radio frequency is 64. So you can see it's turning back down just like that. Or what you can do is if anyone is inside the crane operator seat or if the crane unlock switch has been flipped, the crane will automatically either reset like just like this or while you have it unlocked, the transmission will not go through and it will not reset the crane. So you have to have the reset switch not flipped and you also have to not be sitting in the crane operator seat for the remote raise boom to take an effect now back here as i mentioned before there are winches so you can hook up your helicopter while you're moving or before you move so you don't have to worry about the helicopter slipping off into the water so we can use all these ropes here like this and use these winches here so let's Winch in, create a little bit of tension here. Oops, winch in, a little bit of tension there. Of course, same with over here. So let's winch in and we'll winch in on this side here too. So now that's safe. Um, the reason I even have this crane boom here is you can see the rotor is turning and you wanna make sure you actually don't damage the rotor as you're landing on the helicopter. You can try and land your best to get really close to the rear end. However, I thought it was best to just incorporate a system that could automatically raise the boom. And as the boom's raised, these lights will turn on so you actually can see, while it's nighttime, you can see where the crane boom is to see if you're safe, if you can land or not. Going back to the bridge, you can also do the same thing at the bridge here as well. You want to get in the passenger seat. Type in 64, you want to transmit and also use your voice too, really quick. Use your voice button as you can see on the right side, and it will also transmit and remote deactivate the boom. You transmit again, just transmit, there you go. It'll automatically reset itself. You can see when we move, we want to make sure that helicopter is anchored down pretty tight, make sure nothing, make sure it doesn't fall off. Also, we want to make sure it doesn't ram into any of the other containers or any other supplies that you do have on the ship. Now, it seems that I've forgotten to <laughs> raise the anchors, so let's do that right now. You can see it kind of, it leapt off the ground and then stuck onto the ship, so. It's okay, though. Nothing bad. As you can see, it's just going to raise the anchor back to where it's supposed to be, just up front, just like that. Now, with waves... Does a pretty good job of handling these waves, especially with weight inside on the rear. Let's slow it down a little bit. 100% wind, this vehicle does tend to gain a lot of lift. However, in the real game, as you're playing like career or messing with your friends, it the wind it tends to not be 100% for very long, if at all. Now the waves pretty well. Um, we can switch to camera four and you can see the stabilization as we zoom in to the horizon you can see right there it's doing its best to make sure the horizon is staying level in the longitudinal way now roll of course is going to be monitored with that roll stabilizer it's not perfect however it does get the job done and i do think it does a pretty good job for um what it is so you can see it's you can see the pitch stabilizer is doing a really good job of keeping that horizon in sight, even though we're all the way zoomed in. There, you can zoom all the way out. You can see what's on the front deck, and it'll reset. Even if you have the night vision on, go all the way back, it will reset to this um, default state here. 
thank you for watching. I hope this video informed you if you don't know what you're doing on this this vehicle. Hope you like it. Download it in the description. Um, see you next time. Thanks for watching.